Hey everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Wednesday, August 26th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we're going to look at some new guidance from the CDC and the 2020 plan for the Browns as it stands right now. And of course, a whole lot more. But before we dive too deep into anything, I actually want to get you all caught up on the latest coronavirus data. So today, there were 1,089 new cases of the virus reported, which is above the 21-day average of 1,013. There were also 48 new deaths in the state, with the average coming in at just 21, so quite a bit of a jump there. But hospitalizations and ICU admissions are hovering right at those averages, with 87 new hospitalizations compared to 86, and 17 new ICU admissions compared to 15. The CDC has quietly changed its guidance on its website in terms of testing, now seeming to downplay the importance of testing asymptomatic people who have been exposed to coronavirus. Guidance previously on the agency's website recommended tests for all close contacts of someone who has a confirmed case of COVID-19. But the CDC has now revised that guidance online and says that getting tested, even if exposed to the virus, isn't always necessary. The guidance does still recommend that vulnerable close contacts get tested after potential exposure. It also notes that people may be asked to get tested by a person's health care provider or by local or state public health officials. CDC officials referred all questions to the agency's parent organization, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which suggests that it may have been that organization and not the CDC to push for this change in guidance. HHS officials sent out an email today saying the guidance was revised to reflect current evidence and the best public health interventions, but didn't elaborate on what that new evidence was. But officials did say the updated guidance came out of meetings with the White House Coronavirus Task Force. And something important to note is that the updated CDC guidance does still remind people that those without symptoms are still able to carry and spread the virus. And the agency confirms that yes, it is known that 50% of the virus spread occurs before symptoms even arise. So something just to, to keep in mind. And because of the pandemic, we are expecting a lot of Ohioans to vote absentee. And with slowdowns at the post office, many may choose to utilize drop boxes in their county. But Every county should have one right now, and Ohio Democrats are saying one is just not enough. In fact, state Democrats are suing Secretary of State Frank LaRose in an effort to force an expansion of ballot drop boxes ahead of the November election. The lawsuit comes two weeks after LaRose issued a directive that prohibited election boards from installing drop boxes anywhere but the board location, effectively limiting the number of boxes to just one per county. LaRose responded to criticism last week by saying his innovative solution for paying postage would help make every mailbox a drop box for millions of Ohioans, making it easier than ever to cast a ballot in the general election. He plans to ask the controlling board to approve $3 million in funds from his office's business services division for the postage. However, his office doesn't expect it to exceed $2 million. We'll keep you posted on all of that. And... That's not the only lawsuit LaRose is facing right now. Rapper Kanye West is also suing LaRose in an effort to be placed on the November presidential ballot after he was deemed unqualified as an independent candidate. Kanye's emergency filing comes days after LaRose rejected the nearly 15,000 signatures and other paperwork Kanye submitted earlier this month in an attempt to run for president, citing mismatched information on the signature gathering documents. The complaint claims that it's LaRose's duty to accept any petition for an independent candidate as long as there have been no protests filed against the petition and it's not in violation of Ohio statute. And at this point, LaRose's office has made no comment on the matter, so we'll keep you updated if anything changes in this other lawsuit. And leaders with the Cleveland Browns have announced their lengthy plan for the 2020 football season at First Energy Stadium. Obviously, a number of health and safety guidelines have been considered due to the coronavirus, uh, including a number of significant changes to game day operations. The current plan has been presented to both city and state health officials, and now the Browns are waiting on a final decision to determine if fans will actually be able to go inside the stadium for the September 17th home opener against the Cincinnati Bengals. The plan involves the following following seven safety protocols. So, physical separation of at least six feet, masks or other face coverings required for everyone 10 and older, health screenings for fans and staff, 
enhanced cleaning and disinfecting protocols throughout the venue, comprehensive hygiene protocols for all fans and staff, extensive training, signage, and communication, accountability, flexibility, and compliance protocols to provide oversight and adapt to evolving circumstances. And for season ticket holders who decided not to opt out for the season, here's how the ticketing process will work if fans are approved. Eligible season ticket members will have access to tickets on a rolling basis in waves based on tenure and private seat license status, and will be assigned a designated window of time during which tickets can be purchased on a first-come, first-serve basis. Tickets will be available in pods of known fans, which are considered to be trusted self-selected groups from 1 to 10 people who will be able to sit next to each other within their pod. No pods will be able to be within 6 feet of each other. First Energy Stadium will be divided into four separate quadrants to minimize movement within the venue and contact with other individuals. Fans will be assigned a specific zone and entrance gate based on the location of their tickets, as well as a recommended entrance window for when they should plan to arrive. You will be required to agree to a fan health promise, including a pregame self-health screening and temperature check, like I mentioned before. And we'll keep you updated when a final decision is made. For more in our top headlines, check us out nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, and check out our website, WTOL.com.